We're back. Hey everyone. How y'all doing? I hope doing good. We're going to make a meatloaf today. And this is going out to my granddaughter. Because when she was three or four, I had made one of these and uh, she ate close to half of the whole meatloaf. Almost half. And she's little. We were just wondering where she was putting it. We couldn't figure it out. Anyway, there's some tricks to it that I um, add. And so, right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one of the tricks. Is uh, And I'll put... It's some instant gravy. Brown gravy mix. Just uh, adds flavor. Okay, so we're going to put a level teaspoon of that in there. Most people are like, what? Yeah, trust me. <coughs> trust me on this one, okay? Next, we're going <coughs> to... Um, excuse me. We're going to put in some breadcrumbs. And if you don't have breadcrumbs, you can actually use, uh, um, well, you can use breadcrumbs, but if you don't have any on hand, make some toast and crumble it up. But I'm adding... Some Italian seasoning, some uh, garlic powder, some basil, This is just a one cup of breadcrumbs. Get all the spices I put in there all mixed up. One cup of breadcrumbs, okay. Now we're going to add um, some garlic. I know everyone's like, oh man, I'll just get the stuff out of the little jar. Hey, I'm going to show you some tricks. Everyone who hates to chop garlic. Show you a trick. Because I like fresh garlic. I got my slurry jar. If you don't have a slurry jar, you can use a small uh, uh, coffee can, empty coffee can. It's cleaned out real good. And, uh, you know, Throw your garlic in there with the skins on. This will show you what um what's hap what happens. And if you got a kid, this works great. But don't turn them loose with the jar. Just turn them loose uh, with the empty coffee can. 
Okay. What this essentially does, it takes off the the uh, garlic skin. It breaks it off. I know I only did it for a minute. Let's do it for a little bit longer. Make it take it all off. There we go. Now it's starting to look right. You can see in there, skin's off. Just a little tip to help you out a little bit. Make things move a little bit faster. I mean, you're still going to have to chop it up. Because nobody wants to get a, a big bite of uh, garlic. But... Maybe some people do. <laughs> you just have to fish the bare garlic out. But it makes cleanup a lot better, a whole lot easier. What I'm doing is I'm looking uh, because I've got an extra clove up here. And we'll go with four. I gave it a shake to make sure. We'll go with five. Why not? Let's make it garlicky. <coughs> anyway, there's your skins. You just dump them in the trash when you're done. Okay, so we're going to... You may have a couple of tough skins that don't want to come off, but that's a lot better than, you know what, I'm going to put that in this little skin, put it in my slurry jar, I use it, that jar to mix, if I'm making a gravy or something like that, I use that jar to mix the gravy with, and because I'll take the uh, drippings off of something that I've fried, and uh, and add to that for gravy. Right, a little piece of garlic. It's got a okay. Let's cut the roots off of these. get any bad places or you could actually use the bad places uh, that you see here if you don't use it in a stew or something it'll be uh, kind of woody tasting so I'm just taking those off okay so let's wanted to and you wanted your uh, garlic uh, really fine there's another trick that you can use and what you do is you uh, add some salt on your cutting block just regular old salt 
and it will uh, it'll help you cut things up. I may use that on this last piece of garlic to show you what I'm talking about. On this last piece, let me get a bigger knife. Okay. Yeah, let me get some. A little bit of salt. And what we're going to do is start chopping. We're going to turn it, chop it some more. And we're going to give it a smear. And the salt acts kind of like a uh, type of sandpaper, but it's all edible. Unless you're under a very low sodium diet. <laughs> but it helps you uh, And you can use this method if you're making uh, spaghetti and you got a, uh, and you want to add some uh, garlic toast or garlic bread. This will get out all the oils in the garlic as well. And if you're paying close attention, you're probably saying, that garlic looks like it grew. It didn't grow, but Okay, so let's put this in. Put the rest of this chopped up garlic, kind of sprinkle it around in there. So now you've got three, uh, Pro tips. Let's go ahead and chop this onion. We're going to use the onion skins and uh, throw them away in the in the jar. Not really used to uh, cutting this with two cameras right next to me. Cramps my style. onions will come apart when I start mixing. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm one of those uh, people that clean while I'm cooking. Any old hard skin like that. You can use it for soups or whatever. Then you put it into a, uh, what do they call those machines? <laughs> uh, food processors, if you want to, and just give it a couple of bumps, because you don't want the onions liquefied. Okay, now we're going to add a cup of milk. First, I'm going to wash my hands. Because I've got onions all over them. And the milk is going to uh, moisten the uh, breadcrumbs. And then One slightly beaten egg as a binder. And we're going to put some pepper in it. Some coarse ground black pepper. You put about a Half a tablespoon. Now we had a little bit of salt with that, uh, with that, what do you call it, uh, there they are, with the We need one teaspoon with the garlic. That, and you can uh, smash up onions using that salt trick as well. Now then, we're going to set
the oven temperature to 355. And we're going to do this mix up here. Mix up. Do this mix. And like I said, some people, you can use um, beef, ground beef, or what I'm using is ground turkey. Because I was told to stay away from the red meat. which is okay. I've gotten used to it. Okay. If while you're mixing, you spot any uh, large onion pieces of the skin, it's thick and you can pull those out during this step. See, I've been meaning, I've been wanting to do this for a while now because I've been hungry. Okay, then we're going to pour this in a baking dish. Now, if you want to, you can grease your baking dish. Um, that's totally up to you. I like where it's a little bit uh, burned on bottom. I like the burn part on bottom. I like the edges. Because they are good. And you're going to have depending on your uh, your ratio if you're getting uh, turkey or beef if you're using uh, lean or extra lean you're not going to get the grease that you would normally have. But if you're using just regular old meat, you're going to get the grease. Okay, so this is basically ready to go. Now, some people like to put brown sugar on the top. I'm not supposed to have uh, sugar and stuff, but we're going to cover it and this is for a reason also okay we're going to cover it and we're going to um, put it in the oven 300 to 300, I mean 350, 355 degrees. Okay, and then uh, since I'm living up here in the mountains, it's taken forever for everything to get done, but hey. <laughs> So anyway, we're going to put it in the oven 350 to 355 degrees for an hour. And uh, 
but in all actuality you're going to put it in there for uh, oh about 40 minutes or so and then you're going to take it out and you're going to put the glaze on the top which I know some people use different glazes and some people use uh, you know it's all up to you but I today am just going to put ketchup I may add some uh, something else like some uh, powdered uh, mustard or something we'll just have to see And I do feel a lot safer <laughs> standing in this kitchen than I did before when that dead tree was hanging over. Um, but that dead tree went to good use. They, uh, they called a uh, wood company, a company that sells uh, firewood. And so someone's going to get some warmth out of that dead tree. And I am going to get some peace of mind knowing it's not going to crash down on me in my kitchen. So that's a plus also. What are we at here? 320. Okay. Yeah, they cut up the limbs on it and made kindling out of it and uh, and then took the tree down. And, uh, yeah, that tree was hollow in the middle. That's how dead it was. I think uh, maybe some termites or something had eaten up in there at one time or another. Who knows? But it was literally hollow right in the dead center. And, uh, Yeah, they took the, the tree down and they split it in a bunch of parts, um, which is going to make good, real good firewood because it's already seasoned, you know. <laughs> I mean, it was just, uh, poor tree was dead. So, yeah, that's that makes me happy that it's not just getting torn down and thrown away or or just burn up for nothing. Someone will use it for firewood. There we go. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this meatloaf on the middle rack. Don't worry, I'll put the um, I'll put the recipe down below. Anyway, if y'all do it a different way, uh, do me a favor and leave me some comments. Something to try. Something new. Because uh, my stats are going down a little bit. Uh, I think it's probably their algorithm. And the reason I say that is it's showing that I had uh, I lost 20 subscribers. But my numbers are the same. And it's showing that I uh, lost a bunch of revenue. How could that be when I've brought in four people and they all four of them are all police officers so that they can, uh, they wanted to watch my videos and, you know, they're logging in what uh, commercials they're, or ads they're looking at and everything. So, hey, something's going on. I'm on. I'm going to wait until after this video publishes on Monday. And uh, if I'm still going down, I'm going to contact uh, AdSense and all them and ask them what's going on that they need to go back to a certain day and look because the algorithm, you know, I mean, it's algorithms are made by humans and humans make errors. And it's a, uh, 
you know, it could be just an error. They have it uh, set up wrong or something. But, I, I mean, I've gone from a average of 104 down to 52, up to 57, so something ain't right. And uh, my 2,500 uh, subscribers, I've still got the same, or 24, I mean. I've still got the same amount of subscribers, except that four joined and were not added. But it says I lost 20 subscribers. So the algor algorithm needs to be corrected. And, uh, but I'll get hold of them. Anyway, be sure and hit the like button. And if you see, if you see an ad pop up on here, uh, please click on it. Uh, I just want to see if my numbers go up or if the algorithm is blocking me for some reason or something. And be sure and uh, share this with your friends. Have your friends join too. Because otherwise I'm going to have to uh, wait until the following week. And if that doesn't correct itself, I think I'm going to... Um, I may just start doing random videos off and on. Not anything steady because I'm not into giving people free uh, free commercials and stuff. And I just won't go with commercials. I'll just have it ad free all the time. Okay, so enough of my wondering what's going on. That didn't take very long at all to fix. And now I'm waiting for 40 minutes. Alexa, set the alarm for 35 minutes. 35 minutes, starting now. And that'll give me 40 minutes. And then I'm going to take the aluminum foil off of it. And I'm going to put a uh, ketchup. Maybe I'll add something like some powdered mustard or or uh, or something on there. I may do something to spice it up a little bit. But we'll get back to you when that time comes. Okay, we'll see you in about uh, 35 minutes or so. 34 minutes. Okay, time's up. meatloaf is actually done but we're going to make the glaze on the top I decided I didn't want any just plain old plain old plain old glaze that would be fun so what you're going to need for this is uh, some chopped chives dried chopped chives or fresh if you got them get some fresh ones And you're going to need some ketchup. And you're going to need some sesame speeds. Sesame speeds, okay. Yeah, some sesame speeds. And you're going to need some chipotle smoked red jalapenos. Spicy brown mustard. And of course, your ketchup here. The reason it's the I got about a cup of ketchup on there. We're gonna put about a. A little bit more than a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half, or something like that on there. We're going to sprinkle the sesame seeds and chives on top.
You don't have to use this if you don't want to. You can use plain old ketchup or, or uh, mustard or whatever you want. Just remember, it's your kitchen, your dish. You own it. Be proud of it. Okay. This is going to give it a little bit of kick, so I'm not going to put a whole lot on it. Just a sprinkle. You got to think that meatloaf is thick under there, so. This is going to toast your sesame seeds. If you have, uh, if you don't like sesame seeds, don't use them. Can you imagine a big hamburger like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, hamburger falls in the red meat category, so I can't use eat hamburger either. And everybody says, oh, you can have it once in a while. Yeah. I'll wait till all my labs are perfect, and I might have some. And your kid might. This kind of masks the uh, the color. And I know how kids are. Man, that doesn't look like it's meatloaf. I don't want to eat that. And had it with that, with the uh, with the dressing I just made. I want to taste the uh, smoked red jalapenos. Meatloaf is one of those dishes that is, you can make it a jillion and one ways. And there is no right way. Okay, let's see. Yep. Exactly what I wanted. You know it's good when you can taste in your mind what you want it to taste like. And it comes out tasting exactly like you want it. Okay, Alexa, set the alarm for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, starting now. And what we're going to do is we're going to have kind of a... Uh, we're going to bake that uh, glaze on the top. And it'll set up. And hopefully we'll get some crispies around the edges and everything, because that's my favorite part. And I've still got it. And Okay. Come on. If I can get my... You see, you got a little bit of uh, toasted spots here and there which is what I wanted and we're going to add the chopped chives because you did not want those on there while it was cooking in the oven it just wouldn't uh, well you would end up with uh, little crispy things it tastes like uh, leaves <laughs> or grass. That's just dressing it up a little bit.
Okay. Let's go this way first. And it is tender and juicy, I can tell you that already. And then we're going to come down this way. Because I don't want y'all to think I'm a PIG hog. Once, you know, it's always the first bite that's hard to get. Sometimes you gotta scrape it out and scoop it out and the good thing is you can actually uh, put this in the freezer or refrigerator to uh, to actually uh, thicken. And my light went out. Everything's going out. Let's see what it tastes like, shall we? Okay. That is perfect. Exactly the taste I wanted and everything. And I can have meatloaf sandwiches for lunch for about three days or so or maybe meatloaf for dinner a couple of nights anyway don't forget to uh, share this video hit the like and hit the subscribe and hit that bell and share this with your friends uh, we may do kind of a subscriber uh, Test, or not test, uh, challenge to see who can get me the most subscribers. So I hope you like this, and uh, I'll leave the recipe down below. And uh, if you see uh, a uh, commercial pop up and ad, click on it, and then you can click out of it. I know everybody hates those, but hey, it'll do me some good and help me stay on. Anyway, if you make this, uh, be sure and leave a comment and tell me how you liked it. Or if you got a different way to do it, leave the comments. I love comments, and I always answer. Um, so, you know, if you're in a warm place, go swimming. If you're in a cold place, find a warm place to go swimming or snuggle up. And uh, if you make this, just remember... You own it. It's your kitchen. Be proud of it. Show it off to everybody. Okay, we will see y'all next time. Love y'all.